Hello, everybody. It's nice to be here. Uh, today, I would like to talk to you about something that I'm sure everybody experienced many times in your life uh, over the past few years. So, this is my family, uh, my wife, my two beautiful children, and we are basically a family who likes to go out, uh, explore nature, hike, spend time together, and enjoy each other's company. But sometimes, uh, in our family, uh, we get a small monster, which usually attacks my daughter. And when this monster is active, you basically cannot get to her. She doesn't listen, she doesn't respond, it's just fixed on this little monster. In this case, the monster is the Peppa Pig. If you have a small children, you know what I'm talking about. But when I take this monster away, my little angel turns into the real monster. She starts to scream, to kick her legs, to attack me, so I have to be very careful not to lose any limbs or any part of my body. Uh, so, after talking to my child, I tried to go to talk to my wife, to get to her. Unfortunately, there is also another little monster that attacks my wife. So, usually I tell her some important stuff, like when our child has a, a, some play or something like that, and she says usually, yes, yes, darling, whatever you do, whatever you want, it's nice, no problem. A few days later, when I ask her, did you do that? What? You never told me. So she also didn't uh, hear me, and I couldn't get to her. So as a proper alpha male, I get mad. They're not listening to me. Nobody is listening to me in this family, and everybody should listen to me. I mean, I'm the guy. So after I relax and I uh, am not mad anymore, I started to think what's happening, and actually I noticed that I'm doing the same thing. When my wife is uh, talking to me, I don't listen. I just say, yeah, sure, no problem. When I'm watching football, I actually don't notice my daughters. So uh, I started to wonder, what is this, what is uh, preoccupying us so much, and what is taking our uh, life all together? So, uh, I'm a neurobiologist by uh, definition, a scientist, and I did what every respectable scientist should do when there is a question you need to answer. I googled it. And what I actually found is that uh, this problem is not so uh, new. Uh, there is basically two questions that we are uh, afraid or that the majority of people uh, ask. Uh, it, uh, it involves technology. Uh, and the first question is, uh, will technology take over our lives or take over our brain, our mind, and our bodies? And the second uh, question is, what will happen if technology uh, take over our bodies? Will we become slaves of technology or will we uh, coexist with this technology in some natural uh, way? So. Uh, Within my research, I actually found out that this is not such a new question. Uh, in fact, uh, the first uh, time when such a question was raised and uh, when this problem was addressed was already in the 19th century. Uh, in 1843, Edgar Allan Poe, in one of his poems, uh, mentioned something that would represent a modern cyborg, so a uh, composition of man and machine. And actually, a first modern description of a cyborg was already published in 1911 by a French author, Jean de la Haye. So basically, throughout entire history, uh, people were afraid that technology will take over their lives and that it will uh, consume their body or their mind. Uh, next, when you talk about uh, evolution with people and when you start to question when did technology influence our, started to influence our lives or our evolution, you basically get a general, question, a general answer from them. This is, uh, let's say, evolutionary stage and basically majority of people would agree that in first uh, five uh, stages, we were developing naturally without any technological influences. Those were the times when we were nice, happy, living happy life with the nature. We were all uh, very healthy and everything. Sixth stage is a modern man, and then and th at this moment, technology started to influence our lives. Uh, we got the uh, computers, we got the offices, we got everything that is starting to change our life. And now in this moment, technology is starting to influence our development and influencing our brain. Uh, the last stage 
uh, in our evolution will be uh, basically machines. We will become uh, technology itself. Uh, we will become riddled with small gadgets which are implanted in our bodies. So basically, uh, we will uh, become living machines, cyborgs. Uh, and I was interested if this is really true, if this uh, will happen, and if uh, technology actually started to influence our lives very late in our development. So to answer this question, first we need to uh, know what technology is. In general, technology is any process or method used to better human lives or to manipulate uh, our uh, environment, society, whatever else, whatever. So basically, as you can see here, technology is an excavator, a Facebook, a massage, a barbecue, all of those things are technology. So whatever we do to change our environment or to change ourselves, it's technology. And next thing, which was a little bit uh, interesting to me, or a little bit uh, uh, problematic, uh, is that actually technology started to influence our lives way, way before, even we, when we still were, weren't modern humans. Actually, uh, the first moment when technology started to influence our development was a million years ago, when our ancestors still were not Homo sapiens, but some other kind of humans. What was this technology? It was fire. Actually, not fire itself, but something very important, and that is cooking. Why cooking? Uh, if you take a look at this picture, these are the skulls of our closest uh, really living relative, a chimpanzee, and two of our uh, ancestors in the past. Uh, how we measured the size of the brain in different species, uh, we don't have preserved brains from uh, hominids which lived before us, so we are basically measuring the skull capacity and approximating the size of the skull. As you can see here, uh, basically humans have a much bigger brain than all of our ancestors. Why do we have uh, such a big brain or why is this uh, so important? Uh, well, the big skull, big brain gives us all our uh, abilities that we can do. Uh, when was fire crucial? It was in this part, in uh, Homo species, Homo erectus, uh, ergaster, which was first using fire. So what fire did? Uh, first of all, you have to know one thing about the brain. Brain is a very energetically cost uh, organ. So basically, 20% of all your energy is spent on your brain. When you are re relaxing in your bed, before you go to sleep, you are doing nothing, 20% of energy is going to your brain. In comparison, uh, brain is only 2% of your uh, total body mass. So it's, you, it's using a humongous amount of energy just for doing nothing. And if you start to do something, it uses even more. For example, if you take a look at the newborn, a uh, newborn brain uh, spends 90% of entire energy just for the brain. So brain is very, very expensive. Uh, in evolution, you have the same energy problem that you have now in our uh, society. Uh, if you don't have energy, you have to get it more to finance all your organs. Uh, there is a limited amount of energy that you can use uh, in your body. Uh, for example, if you eat uh, 24 hours a day, only food and nothing else you do, there is a maximum energy that you can uh, harvest. So basically, when you hit that uh, ceiling once, you cannot develop larger organs uh, because you don't have any more energy. So what can you do? Either you can uh, take some energy from some other organ, or you can make some process more efficient to be able to uh, get energy, a uh, little bit more energy to your body. So what cooking did in our case is it made uh, food that we eat much more, uh, much more uh, we could better uh, digest it, so we need to use less energy to uh, consume it. And because of that, we needed a shorter gut. Because we needed a shorter gut, we, get, we got some energy from those, uh, our intestines, which got diverted to the brain. So basically, technology enabled our body to consume more energy, to be more efficient, to shorten our guts, and thus uh, expand those energy on our brain. So basically, cooking made us what are we today. 
So the first answer is technology is influencing us for one million years. But this is not the only thing that technology did, created the large brain. Uh, it did some changes to our society. Because our brain is so big, and as I mentioned, those newborn babies use 90% of energy for their brain, it changed a little bit in our uh, families. Because mother couldn't anymore uh, uh, feed those ch that child with all the necessary food, it needed help. What did evolution do? Created fathers. So a uh, big brain is uh, directly responsible for having a father. But there is more. This was not enough. Uh, that brain needed more. So it created grandparents. And the only reason grandparents uh, are uh, existing is to stuff their grandchild with food. So if there is any grandparents in the audience, you have to do your important stuff and stuff your uh, grandchildren with food, all the food that you can get. So what did we get? We got the family. So family is direct uh, result of the big brain and changes in our evolution. And basically, the family is the product of technology influencing our development. This here is my extended family. And all those people are necessary to feed or take care of this little bundle of joy, uh, which is uh, my youngest daughter. Uh, by the way, this is taken on April 2nd this year. Very nice uh, spring weather in Zagreb. So uh, in my investigation, I basically started to look what else did technology do. And one thing that always uh, pops up when we are talking about technology today is a term called the digital dementia. This term uh, basically says that uh, because of using digital technology, we are getting stupider. We are losing some cognitive abilities because we are really releasing all those abilities to the machines. So basically, this is, this is not the first time that something like this happened. For example, when we discovered the writing, uh, we basically took something from our brain, memory, so we had to memorize a lot of different stuff, and we put it to the paper. We took it out of our brain. So I'm sure nobody here would uh, argue that people before invention of writing were much smarter than people today. Uh, this technical advantage uh, enabled our brain to focus on more important stuff and to, do, to, to put something menial outside of the brain and not to spend energy and time on doing stuff like that. Today, we know that technology is influencing our brain. For example, uh, in these pictures, there are proof that uh, on, in children, which are using, uh, let's say, four hours of digital media per day, there are structural changes in the brain. Uh, the blue dot shows area in the brain which is uh, involved with processing emotions. And in this area, we notice that there is less volume, less brain cells, which means uh, possibly less uh, function. The yellow part is involved with our internal self, with our needs, and this area got bigger, more brain cells, more uh, stuff. So basically, you could say that digital media is actually turning people into more self-centered, less capable of processing emotions, and uh, it's basically destroying our society because we won't be able to recognize emotions and needs of other people. We will be more focused on ourselves. Uh, Technology is not used only for bad things, and it's not only destroying our society. This is one example where you have tetraplegic peoples, uh, where you can ins uh, install uh, electrodes in their brain and connect it with the artificial limb. These people can move those artificial limb only with their brain, and which is very important, they can also sense it. So they have a feeling and um, uh, motor skills which they basically lost because of the injury. So basically, technology can help to solve many problems. One technology that is always uh, blacklisted, so to say, are video games. Uh, basically, everybody says that video games are very bad for you and you shouldn't do it. Uh, for example, I, if I were uh, doing research as much as I were playing video games, I would probably win a Nobel Prize by now, so I'm a lost cause. But uh, several studies show that uh, surgeons which are doing endoscopic surgery are actually better if they play uh, video games. Similar stuff were shown for uh, uh, strategic planning, complex task solving, and similar stuff. So, at the end, uh, 
what is the question? Will we turn into the uh, machines and we will be mindless slaves or uh, basically uh, one with the nature? The answer to the first question is actually pretty straightforward. Yes, uh, we will turn into cyborgs. Uh, technology will be incorporated in our bodies and in our minds, and technology will influence our minds. However, the answer on the second question is a little bit uh, more tricky. Uh, it basically depends on us. Uh, why? Uh, a lot of people were discussing this topic and a lot of people were talking about it, from famous writers to Nobel Prize winners to famous singers. So basically the one thing that all of them said is technology is neither good or bad. It's just the way we use it. We can use it for good or we can use it for bad stuff. It's up to us to decide how we will use it. The second thing that we can uh, learn about technology is that uh, you have to always uh, have some ethics on your mind. Just because you, have, you can invent something and something can be used for one purpose, it doesn't mean it needs to be used. Uh, the third thing that you have to take into account when you're uh, talking about technology is that technology is basically uh, made for humans, uh, and humans will use it. Humans have needs, humans have moods, humans have, they get tired, they are vindictive, they are cre creative, they are nice. So basically when you are developing some kind of technology, you always have to have in mind that that technology will be used by humans, and you have to design it in the way but for humans to use it in most uh, useful and most appropriate way. So, uh, what, what can you uh, take home uh, at the end of all this uh, talk about the brain and technology? Uh, I would like you to take just one thing. Uh, before using technology, use your brain. That's the best and the smartest advice you can always have. If you use your brain, you won't be used by technology, but you will be using technology. And at the end, uh, this is my nice family once again. And the other picture is actually showing that we already lost to the technology. And if you lost, you can adapt. So I'm taking care of my newborn uh, while playing video games, uh, not to lose any playing time. Thank you very much.